And let's talk about some more things that we should be doing in the church. It says in 1 Peter 2, 5, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifice. In verse 9, a little further, a little further down, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into the into his marvelous light. We should praise him. That is part of, that is part of being a spiritual sacrifice is praising him. In Hebrews thirteen, fifteen, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips given thanks to him in everything, even the bad. Spiritual sacrifices. If things are going bad and you've had to give up you've you've had to give up something, we should still show forth praise. We should still be praising him. Whether things are going good or bad, we should be always praising the Lord. That is what he asked for. Spiritual sacrifice. The sacrifice when we have lost, but we should still praise him. In Romans twelve one, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know that verse, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know the world has no mercy. The world has no mercy. If you have a job and there's positions that you can be moved up in and there's other people who want that position, you better believe they're going to do what they need to do to step on you or to make you look bad to get moved up. The world has no mercy. The Lord knows mercy. He gives mercy. And it says that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. In Galatians 2.20, it, it tells what that means. In the Living Bible, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. And I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And that's what, what happens when, you're, when you become born again Christian. You no longer live for yourself. You have died to self. And now you're living for the Lord. You have crucified your, yourself to put Jesus there. But Christ who lives in me. And the real life I now have within this body is a result of my trusting in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Now this is what is called being a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy just meaning, you know, when we ask for forgiveness of sin, we're holy, we're pure, until we sin again, because then we're, we're without sin. But we'll be sinning again, because there was only one perfect, and that was Jesus. But from the time we ask for forgiveness until we sin the next time, during that time, we are holy, acceptable unto God, it says. Acceptable unto God. What is that? If you go to 1 Peter 2, 5, it says... Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Pretty much what the verse says here. We're a spiritual house, we're a priesthood. We're supposed to offer up spiritual sacrifices, praises to Him that are acceptable to the Lord. And it says, which is your reasonable service. The last part of that verse. It is... That is, the Lord said, he's, he's not asking for much. That is really not much to give. He said, that is a reasonable service to give me praise. That's what he's saying. Take care of your bodies. In the Old Testament, the animals were, were sacrificed. They weren't fat and they weren't skinny. They were healthy and pure animals. They had no sickness, but now we or a living sacrifice. Sacrifice and praises to the Lord. But we also should be that kind of sacrifice that the animals were. Pure and holy. Without sickness. You know those who indulge in food. That is wrong. There's some that, are, that, are, that uh, there's a reason for it. And then you need a doctor. You need medication. But 
some people who are fat, it's just because they, they, they just indulge. But don't look down at fat people and saying, well, you're sinning by eating too much. Don't do that. Because there's, there's also smoking. That is not taking care of our bodies. Smoking is not taking care of your body. We shouldn't smoke because smoking is bad for your body. But then again, don't look down at someone who does smoke. And the reason I say these things is because there's people out there, there's Christians out there who don't smoke and they don't indulge in eating. But you know, they do have sins. And their sins we might not can see. These other people, we can see their sins. But there's some people out there, we can't see their sins. But believe me, they have it because there's no one perfect out there. So if you don't smoke and if you don't overeat, don't look down at people who do because you have a weakness yourself. We can't see it, but you have one. So we can't be looking down at people because we see their sins. I mean, they might have like bitterness, a hardness of a heart. You know, those we can't see those. They, 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 might, they might envy you for whatever reason. Now, unless they just come out and show it, but they can have it in their heart where we can't see it. So we're all in the same category. So because I point out people who indulge in eating, people who smoke, you know, just because I point those out, that doesn't mean, well, those are the ones that are bad. No. We all have weaknesses. You know, part of that spiritual sacrifice is also having a broken spirit, a broken heart. I'm talking about the Lord breaking the spirit of whatever. I'm, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about this because we all have a spirit. We're all spirit. And some of us have a stubborn spirit. You see what I'm saying? So it takes a, a spirit and breaks it to become a Holy Spirit. And it takes a, a broken heart, not a heart that's been broken because they lost someone they love. We're talking about he wants to break the heart from from being wicked. Because believe me, if you read the Bible, it talks about the heart. And the heart is continuously wicked. That's what it talks about. So he wants a broken spirit and a broken heart. One that is true to him. When they praise him, it is true. It is not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And that's what the Lord wants. That's the kind of sacrifice he wants. Is to break your spirit and to break your heart and make it holy. And make the heart true unto him. Now, some of you might be saying, well, you know, he was talking about people who smoke. He talks about people who overeat. Well, how about uh, drinking? You know, because you see a brother or a preacher uh, drinking, or uh, let me say this, having a drink, like a beer or some wine, you know, like the Baptist church, they're, they're totally against that. That's a sin. To drink is a sin. But it's not what the Bible says. The Bible says getting drunk is a sin. Getting drunk is a sin. Drinking is not sinning. Because apparently they didn't read Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 26. And this is talk, the Lord is talking about the people who are bringing in the tithe. Some by money, some by you know, their flock. But he's talking to the people and he says to them, the Lord, the God, God said this in Deuteronomy. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thou so lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. Now the, the Lord is the one saying this. So those of you who believe wine is alcohol, well, it says it right here, it's okay. Or for those of you who don't believe that wine was alcohol, that it was just grapefruit juice, well then strong drink is going to cover the alcohol then. Because if it doesn't get you on wine, then it's going to get you on the next verse, the next uh, saying for strong drink. Now that definitely should mean alcohol. So right here the Lord is saying, it's okay. It's okay to have a drink. Even if it's a strong drink like alcohol, it's okay. Don't go judge a person because you see them drinking. If you see them getting drunk, then okay. Go to them and say, hey, you know, it's a sin to get drunk. This is not a Christian way. But just because you see him drinking a beer or a wine or whatever it may be, if you see him drinking it, but they're still, you know, they're not, they're not drunk. And let me say this, drunk, it doesn't mean that they're falling down. If you're tipsy, you're drunk. So if you can drink a beer or, or a glass of wine and it, it doesn't affect you, there is nothing wrong with that. So do not judge people when you see them drinking. Okay, let's get on wolves. 
because the Bible speaks about wolves. And wolf, what is a wolf? A wolf is a person, a man, who is dressed like, dressed up like a shepherd. A shepherd is a preacher, someone who takes care of the flock. A wolf is someone who is disguised. You can't look out there and say, oh, that's a wolf. Because they're not dressed like wolves. They're dressed like a man of God. So let's, let's, let's see what the scriptures say. In Titus chapter 1, verse 9 through 12, it says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainslayer. For there are many unruly, ruly, and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said that the centurion are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Now these verses here are talking about wolves. They're deceivers. They're vain talkers. They're unruly. And they're out to, to destroy the house, the family. That's what they're here for. We are supposed to be walking with the Lord. We're supposed to know the word. So when we do have a wolf come among us, we should be able to point out a wolf. And the way to point out a wolf is he going against the word of God. Is he bringing attention to himself, not to the Lord. He's giving praise to himself. These are just one of the ways to see a wolf. But the main one is, is he going against the word of God? Jesus pointed out the vipers and the hypocrites. And we as preachers or teachers are to follow his way. He did it, and that's what we should do. We should point out the wolves. In Acts 20, 29, For I know this, after, that after my deporting shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So wolves are going to enter into the church. It's going to happen. But we need to have discernment. And the only way we're going to get that is by getting into the Word of God, by growing in the Lord. You know, when you're a baby Christian, you fall down, you get up, you fall down, you get up. It's just like a baby learning to walk. They fall, they get up, they fall, they get up. Now a wolf can, can affect a baby Christian because a baby Christian doesn't know better. Now, the reason we need to grow in the Lord and not just be satisfied with, with getting into the door, which I'm talking about getting saved, getting into the door, but then just staying right there. You know, I made it in, but I don't want to go any further. No, that is bad. We get born again, we're on milk, but we should get to the meat of the Word of God. So for when we do come across a wolf, we can recognize it. We can recognize it. Being a baby Christian all your life, that's not good. We have babies here, when they're small, they're real cute and everything. The things they do are cute. But if you go to the same baby 20, 30 years from now, and they're still doing the same thing, that's not so cute. That's also with a Christian. When they're born again, they make mistakes, they fall down, they get up, they fall down, they get up. But we need to get where we get off the milk and on to meat so we can grow and so we can discern, we can have discernment of a wolf. And believe me, the verses do teach that there are wolves out there. And Jesus pointed them out, and I will. If there's a wolf among us, I will point that wolf out. Jesus did it, and I learned from my Lord. Acts 20, 30, it says also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Again, that's what a wolf does. He draws you away from the Lord and onto themselves. You know, with me teaching and preaching, mainly teaching, you know, I'm teaching and I'm pointing you toward the Lord. I'm not pointing you toward Jesse. I don't have a church. I'm not pointing you to come to me because I don't even have a church. I'm not in it for the money. Because I give these tapes away. They're free. So I'm not in it for the money. And I'm not a wolf trying to draw you away from the Lord. I'm trying to draw you toward God. To the Lord. Because that is my ministry. My ministry is to show you to Jesus. But a wolf will not. A wolf will draw you to himself. So to back that up what I'm saying. 
Read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. A wolf wants to deceive you. And they're good at it. They're very good at it. Because I see it. I see thousands and thousands of people following wolves. They don't know. They don't know. Some of them I know. Some of them, uh, well, I know he's not supposed to do that or say that. But, you know, he really is a man. No, no, no. He's not a man of God if he's teaching you something, a doctrine that is different from the Word, from the Bible. Okay? But there are lots of wolves out there, and there are lots of people following the wolves, and they're there to deceive you. And they, and like I say, they do a good job because they're dressed just like a shepherd. They sound like shepherds. They look like shepherds. But in their heart, they're wolves. They're wolves. When they're begging for money, that's not the will of God. When, you, when they're trying to show you another way to God besides Jesus, that's not the will of God. We need to see what the Word of God says. So when we do hear men speaking of another way, then we know this is a wolf and we need to get away from him. Now let's get on a, another topic of uh, traditions. Now this is going to affect a lot of people. Because traditions, traditions have been here a long time. And that's one of the hardest things to break for a religious person is, tra the, uh, is the tradition of the church. Because they've grown up to learn this. And they believe it's, that's, that's God's ways. But we're going to read the scriptures. And we're, I'm going to point things out that are in the church, traditional stuff, that is not of God and that is not in the Word. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinance as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of, of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Now I read these two verses, because the verse says to keep the ordinances. Okay, we have ordinances. There's a difference between ordinances and tradition. Right here, it's, uh, I spoke of the chain of command before, but right here it shows it. It says that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of woman. This is not a tradition. This is the ordinances of God. Okay, this is the, this is the way of God. Now, I'm going to show traditions because this... this uh, can can be considered a, a tradition because traditions and ordinances is is about the same thing, but I'm going to show the traditions of religion. That is up against that is against the word of God. Those are the traditions we need to stay away from. This tradition here of God being over Christ, Christ being over man, and man being over the woman, that is not that is of the word. Now, when you get it from the word, then you can follow it. Then you can accept it. But well, we're going to see some traditions of the churches that is not in the Word. And I would challenge anybody who's listening to this tape, if I show something, a tradition that is in the church and not in the Word, but you can show me that it is in the Word, believe me, I will accept it. Any man who comes up to me and shows me verses, the Word of God, to where I, I taught something wrong, then I will accept that if I can see it, if the Lord shows it to me and I, and, and, and I can see, oh, yeah, you're right. But I can tell you right now, do not, do not come to me with your opinion or what, or what you think. Because to tell you the truth, your opinion and my opinion ain't worth a flip. Everybody's got opinion. Opinions, I don't want to hear them, and I don't give them. If you can see all the statements that I make in all my tapes, including this one, I am giving the scriptures to back it up. You come to me with scriptures, I'm going to listen. You come to me with opinion, I'm not going to listen. And that's the way you should be. If you're listening to someone, listen to what they have to say in the Word of God. But if they're coming to you and they say, well, I think, well, you know, we really shouldn't care what, what you think. I'm not living my Christian walk, basing my Christian walk on what someone thinks. I'm going to be grounded in the Word of God. 
And the way to get grounded in the Word of God is by studying it. So if you want to be able to to, uh, to be able to discuss Scripture with someone, then you need to know it yourself. And like I said earlier in this tape, don't come to me and say, well, my pastor said, or my teacher said. No. If you come to me, you come to me with the Scriptures that you've read and that the Lord has shown you to be true. Then I will listen. Believe me, I will listen. I'm not like, I'm the only one right. Because I'm a man just like all these other preachers. I'm, I'm just a man. And, and I can make mistakes. And if, if I have made a mistake with a, with a, with a verse and, and, a, and a brother can show me, you know, you took that out of context, believe me, I will change it. Believe me, I will. But we don't want to hear people's opinion. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear the word of God. And that's why I have tons and tons of scriptures when I make a tape. When I have a teaching, I use tons of scriptures to show you that it's the Word of God. Now let's get to some of these traditions. In Matthews 15, 1 through 7, it speaks about the Jewish leaders. They wanted to know why the disciples didn't obey their traditions of the ritual they did before they ate by washing their hands. And Jesus said to them, Why do you disobey the commandments of God? Where it says to honor your father and mother. But your traditions, you say to give to the church before you give to your parents' needs. That's against the Lord. Their tradition is that you give to the church first your tithe. You give that to the church first. Even if your parents are in need, they teach that you give to the church. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to honor your father and mother. And there's another place we'll get to where, it's, where, it, where the scriptures show that if your parents are in need, then you help your parents. Then you give to the church. But Jesus, right here in these verses, Jesus calls them hypocrites for doing that. He, call, he, is, he is calling these religious leaders, these are religious leaders, he is calling them hypocrites. Let's read some more verses. Mark chapter 7, 6 through 8. It says, He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written this people honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men for laying aside, laying aside the commandments of God ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other, and many other such things like this so what the Lord here is saying that they honored, they honored the Lord with their lips. We're talking about religious leaders again. They honored the Lord with their lips. But their heart is far from the Lord. They worship in vain. They teach the doctrine of men. They don't teach the doctrine of the Lord, the Bible. They teach traditions. Mark 7.13, it says, Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye, making the word of God of none effect because of their traditions. Tradition is against the Lord. It's against the Lord. We need to break away from traditions. And most traditions are not traditions of God. They're traditions of man. Some of them I've already spoke about, like passing the plate. That is a tradition of man. But the Lord didn't say pass the plate in church. He said to tithe. But we should tithe either melon in our tithe or, like I said, in some churches, I've been in churches where they have a box in the corner by the door somewhere, and if you got money to give, you put it in the box. But they don't take time out of praise service, of worship service, of preaching service to pass a plate. And like I've said before, that hinders some people from going to church. If you have money to give to the Lord, it's not a time that you do it during a praise service. When you're praising God, you should be praising God, singing and praising God. If you're worshiping, oh man, for sure, worship is not a time to stop and pass a plate around. Worship, when you worship the Lord, you're down on your face. You're down on your face worshiping the Lord. That is worship. Praising and worship are two different things. Praising, you sing until. Worship, you're down on the ground worshiping Him. 
as Lord. Service, I've told you before, includes things like praising, praying, worshiping, preaching. You know, that is having church. Another tradition that we have, we have where we go up to the altar to pray. Read your Bible. The altar is in your heart. We don't need to go up there in front and pray. What did the Lord say? The Lord said to pray in your closet. And if you need prayer, if you need a brother or a sister to help you pray, to pray with you about something, then you go get them and you do it outside. But to go up in front, in front of everybody, that you know, that's not of the Lord. We're not supposed to do it in front of everyone. The Lord says to pray in secret, to pray in your closet. That's not praying in your closet. That's going up front. And, I mean, for some people, they're really seriously going up there praying for a need. And they don't know, well, you know, you can do that right where you're sitting or standing. You can do it right there. You don't have to go up front. That's the tradition of men, to go up front and say that's an altar you can pray at. The Lord hears you just as well where you're at than to be up there in front. There's nothing more holy about going up front. Okay? There's nothing more holy about that. That doesn't mean that the Lord is closer to you if you go to the front. Also, the tradition of men is, is at the end of the service, when they have the invitation. Every head bowed, every eye closed. That's not of the Lord. And having these songs repeated over and over while we wait for someone to walk down the aisle, that's the tradition of men. After the, finish, after the preacher is finished preaching, he should just come out and say, now, now is there anyone here who wants to accept the Lord? Why should we close our eyes? It's nothing that we should be ashamed of. The Bible says, don't be ashamed of me if you do this. So why are we closing our eyes? Is it something that, that, be, that should be shameful of? No. I mean, what is all this playing of music and stuff? Is that going to reach somebody? No. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, you're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So by you preaching the Word of God, a preacher preaching the Word of God, when he's finished, then he should just say, now, is there anybody here who wants to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? If nobody moves, then there's nobody there. If, 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 if you preaching in the Holy Spirit didn't reach in then, playing some music in the background and singing some songs afterwards, it's not going to reach them. This is the tradition of men. The tradition of the Lord is when you hear the word, you respond to it right then and there. We shouldn't have to wait and wait and wait. This is the tradition of men. The way of the Lord is, is there anybody here who wants to accept the Lord? Come forth. If you don't come forth, okay, the service is over.